What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how you can take a rasterized logo that we found on the internet, vectorize it so that we can bring it into Cinema 4D and make it into a full 3D logo. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this is going to be a beginner's tutorial, but follow along because you might learn something new. So basically, I'm going to take this Thundercats logo that I found off the internet. And if I double click on it, we can see that it's pretty decent resolution, I would say. It's 894 by 894. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this into Adobe Illustrator. So I'm just going to click and drag it into Illustrator. And you can see that it's pretty small on the canvas here. So if I come down, I hold down the control key, hit the plus symbol to kind of zoom in here. And let me select it. I mean, it's kind of tiny in there, but I mean, it's clean enough to where we might be able to pull a pretty good logo out of it. So what I'm going to do is I have it selected here. I'm going to come up to image trace just click that and right here where we have this image trace box if you don't see this here make sure you just come over to window come down to image trace and that's how you pop it up if you don't see it but what i'm going to first start off by doing is clicking on the preset and maybe let's click on black and white logo and then come down to advance and i'm going to click ignore white and i'm just going to drag this down a little bit so it looks like we're able to pull off a pretty good logo out of it even though it's a little bit lower res and so it's all about playing around with the attributes here until you find something that you're happy with. Every logo is going to be totally different. So the attributes that I'm using here might not work for your logo. So it's kind of just, you know, play around with it and figure out something that works good for you. So I'm just going to play around with these attributes a little bit here. And it looks like I'm pulling something pretty clean if I put on the noise here. So that looks pretty good there. So I'm not going to waste too much time here. What I'm going to do is click expand. And now if I zoom in, actually, let me just select this. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, just click and drag it out really large like so. And if I actually hold down the alt key with the shift key, it will just expand it out from the center. But that looks like a pretty clean Thundercats logo there. So what I'm going to do now is click on object and make sure you have it selected first. But I'm going to come up, click object, come down to artboard, and I'm just going to go to fit artboard to bounce just like that. And then from here, we're going to save it as an Illustrator file, but not just any Illustrator file. We have to save it out as an Illustrator 8 file because that's the only one that Cinema 4D is going to recognize. So I'm going to come up to File, come down to Save As, and then I'm just going to find a place to save it. So I'm going to go to my Illustrator folder here. As you can see, I was already working on this before, but I'll just name this Thundercat Logo 2. And then I'm just going to click Save. And then if I come right here where it says version, no matter what version of Illustrator we're using, we're always going to have to save it out as Illustrator 8. So I'm just going to scroll down here to where it says Illustrator 8, click OK, and then click OK again. And this will allow us to bring the Illustrator file into Cinema 4D where we can extrude it and make everything look really cool. So I'm just going to open up Cinema 4D R23 here. All right, cool. So we got Cinema open. So I'm just going to click this off. And then we're just going to drag this over a little bit so that we can see our objects panel here a little bit better. So what I'm going to do from here is right here under objects, I'm going to click on merge object. And then I'm just going to find where I saved that illustrator file. So let me come down to 3D logo AI. And it was this one, Thundercast logo 2. I'm going to click open. And then I'm going to connect all the splines. So I should have group splines and connect splines. Leave the scale at 1. I'm just going to click OK. And there we go. Now we have our Thundercast logo in here. So what I'm going to do is go to my attributes window, click coordinates. I'm just going to zero everything out. And then what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to bring a mannequin into my scene just so I could kind of, you know, equivalent how large my logo is going to be compared to like a human size. It's just something that I like to do just for scale sake. So if I come over here to where we have the cube, just click and drag on the figure. And you can see our figure is way larger than our logo. So what I'm going to do from here is select the logo. And maybe let's start with like 15 by 15, which that looks like a pretty decent size there. So the only reason I bring the mannequin in is just so I have something that I could kind of compare the sizing to. And I don't know, that's just the way that I usually go about it. So I'm going to delete my figure there. And I have my logo in here now. So the next step from here is we want to start extruding this. But let me click down on my um, path here. You can see that we have two different paths, which it looks like the one we don't even really need. So I'm going to delete that there. And now we just have the one path here. So what I'm going to do is come right here where we see this box. It says some division surface. Just going to click on hold this and come over to extrude. 
and then I'm going to drag my path under the extrude and now you can see I mean it looks really crazy and that's easy to fix I'm just going to click on my extrude come over to object and right here where it says offset let's start with like one something around those lines there and that's giving us a pretty decent extrusion on there I mean we could probably even go a little bit smaller and this is going to vary depending on how big you make your logo and everything I mean these numbers aren't absolute it just depends on you know your project and what you're working on but it looks like we have a pretty cool Thundercats logo there already extruded so if you want to take it a little bit further we come over to cap and then what I like to do is come down to like load preset so I'm going to click on this and maybe let's do like a rounded, a basic rounded first. See what this looks like, which that looks pretty cool there. I always like to bevel the edges. And then I'm going to actually click on my path, come down to where it says intermediate points, click adaptive, come down to natural. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit. So if I scroll this down, actually, let me bring this back down to like five. You can see it's kind of jagged around the edge. So if you bring the numbers up, that's actually going to add a little bit more geometry to it and it's going to smooth it out a lot better so basically there we go we have our thundercast logo extruded in here i mean you could go in and do any type of cleanup that you want but that's the basics of how we could take like a rasterized logo and bring it into cinema 4d and if you wanted to take it one step further here's something that i was playing around with earlier so if i come over to open projects right here and I actually built this out just the same exact way. But if I click on my extrude, I just messed around with some of the attributes in here, which gave me like this really cool chiseled look in here. That's some cool stuff that we could do with our logos once we bring them in. I actually changed out the outside and used the tube in here instead. So if I turn this off, you can see that I used the tube just to make it a little bit smoother, give me a little bit more control. And I just brought the Thundercats head in there. So if you look here and I turn this off, so you can see I brought the head in separate. So, I mean, it's all about how you artistically want to create it. I just brought the head in and then I replaced everything out. So hopefully this gives you a good rundown how we could just take, you know, like a logo off the internet, even if it's a little bit low res right into Illustrator. It, luckily, I was able to pull a pretty good logo out of it, vectorize it, bring it into cinema, and it's as easy as just adding an extrusion to it. So I know this was a little bit of a basic tutorial, but a few people did ask me about it. So if you're one of the people that did leave me a question and this did help you out, this little step-by-step -step tutorial, make sure you leave me a comment down below just so I make sure that it got to you. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you click subscribe. I'm doing weekly content on here, so it's much appreciated if you do. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.